cannot go two ways at one time. We cannot go two ways at one time. We will go this way. We will go that way. This way. That way. Which, Which direction, direction will we go? go? We can follow Jesus here and now. We can follow Jesus here and now. We can go His way. His way is the best way. His way. Best way. The, the only way, way to go. La 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 la. We can go His way. His way is the best way. His way. Best way. The only way to go. La 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 la. Notice. I want you out of here by five. Oh, eviction notice? Oh, I'm being evicted. Oh, oh, where I'm gonna put all this stuff from my TV shows? Oh, it's no good. What'll I do? Oh, I know. Yes, yes, I'll ring speed up. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Speedy! Yeah, it's Waffle. Hi, Waffle. What's happening? Hey, do you want to go and get something to eat? Oh, no! Oh, want to see a movie? Yes, Speedy, I've just been given this eviction thingy. Oh, sounds like fun. How do you use it? Oh, no, this big guy with no hair just came in and gave me a letter saying that I have to be out of here by five o'clock today. Wow, you've been evicted. Oh, what am I going to do? Simon is away and I'm the only one here. Calm down, Wolf. Calm down. Let, let's think about this. Oh, oh, I've got all the sets from the famous Oasis video and I've got boxes and boxes of props and videos and chocolate and puppet theatres and paintings. All right, and... all right, Wolf, Calm down. I, I think you should try and call Simon. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. Uh, just hang on a minute, will you, Speed Hump? I'll be right back. Hello? Oh, sorry, it's Waffle. Um, how come your phone is on if you're in the plane? Whoops, I forgot to turn it off. Do you know what that can do to a plane? Turn it off, sorry, turn it off! No, what? Why are you calling me? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, we forgot. Uh, we've got an eviction notice. What? From the puppet factory? Excuse me, sir. Hello. Would you mind turning that phone off? Thank you. Sorry! Sorry! Oh, oh no! He's not coming! Oh, oh what am I going to do? Think, Waffle. Think, think, think. Come on, what are we going to do? It looks like it's up to you, Waffle. Yes, I can do this. In fact, I know I can do this. Yes, I can. For the first time in my life, I will make this work. Yes, Waffle to the rescue. Yes, you can do this, Waffle. Who want to be great? Then serve.
lost these when I was on holiday. Oh. Good afternoon, sir, and welcome to our fair country. You have a pleasant flight over here? Oh, yes, thank you. The in-flight movie was really cool. That's good to hear. Now, do you have any contraband that you wish to declare? Con contra what? Uh, contraband. Things that you're not supposed Ooh. to bring into our country. You must Gosh, I can't even pronounce the word contraband. Contraband. Yeah, contraband. No, you know, know, animals, plants. Yeah, yeah oh, look, I'm absolutely sure I don't have any contraband. Oh, I've got Tim Tams, though. Tim Tams, eh? Yeah. Let's just have a bit of a look in here, shall we? What's this, sir? That's a packet of Tim Tams. Tim Tams, eh? Yeah, that's right. Uh, should I declare it? Oh, what about that packet? Should I declare it as well? Oh, what about the double chop? Should I declare them twice? You see, I don't want to be in any trouble. Oh, I don't want to go to jail. Paul went to jail, and look what happened to him. He hadn't even done anything wrong. Lots of people didn't like him telling him about Jesus, and there was a big fight, a riot, and the soldiers came and arrested him for being the cause of the riot, and he's thrown into jail. You're not going to throw me into jail, are you? Your box, sir. Who? Thank you. Not a problem. Enjoy your stay in our country. Oh, thanks. Um, could I have my Tim Tams? Oh, yeah. Not a problem, sir. Oh. 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 Here you go. Thank you. Next. <laughs> oh, careful, laddie. Hey, who said that? It, it's Grandad. Grandad? My Grandad? Oh, what, what for? Open the suitcase. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh. <coughs> Oh, it's very stuffy inside there. Oh, it's you, Grandad. Oh, I thought mm. it was another Grandad. You know, my mum's Grandad. Well, well, not her Grandad, her dad. Uh, more like, you know, a Grandad Grandad. Not to be confused yes, okay. with Dad. Well, forget the point. Oh. Well, it looks like you're cleaning up in here. What's going on? Yeah. Well, we've been evicted and what? I'm packing up everything. <laughs> what? By yourself? Yep, all by myself. <clears throat> I'll just put uh. a book away. Well, careful, careful, Waffle, with mm. my lovely old Bible. Hang on. Hey, I know this Bible. Yes, we know that. Never stop reading the Bible. Not a better book to read. Oh, I would, but um, I can't read. Oh, that's okay, Worf. Yeah. Sit back and I'll tell you a fabulous story from the Bible. This is how everything began. It comes from the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Oh, wow. Cool animation. God said, I command light to shine. God looked at the light and saw that it was good. God created all that in one day? He's about to do a lot more than that. On the second day, he made the sky. On the third, the oceans and land and plants. The fourth, God made the sun, moon and stars. On the fifth day, God said, I command the ocean to be full of living creatures and I command birds to fly above the earth. God looked at what he had done and it was good. On the sixth day, God said, I command the earth to give life to all kinds of tame animals and wild animals and reptiles. And that's what happened. God looked at every one of them and he saw it was good. God said, now we will make humans and they'll be like us. They'll rule over the fish and the birds and the other living creatures. So God created humans to be like himself. He made men and women. God looked at what he had done and all of it was very good. On the seventh day, God rested. Whew. I can see why he needed a rest. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, look at all those lovely little animals. God did make a beautiful world. Everything was perfect at the very beginning, but it didn't stay that way. God put Adam and Eve, his very first humans, into a perfect garden. There was no sadness or death or tears. God let them look after all the animals, but gave them one very important instruction. Don't eat the fruit that comes from the tree in the middle of the garden. Uh -oh. I always want to do things that people tell me not to. Exactly. They did what God said not to do and ate the fruit. Oh, it's only a piece of fruit. It wasn't the fruit that mattered as much as they disobeyed what God had said. God had set up very important rules and they chose to go against him. 
When they did that, the man and woman brought evil into God's world that had no evil. Ever since then, we've had sad things and tears and all sorts of bad things happening. Why couldn't they just have done what God said and nothing bad would have happened? Well, Adam and Eve didn't listen to God, Waffle. Ooh, busted! This is very serious. Adam and Eve brought what is known as sin into the world. Um, have you seen the news on TV recently? No, no, I only watch cartoons. Well, the world is not the way God wanted. It's a mess. All because no one follows God's ways. The perfect world God made was ruined. Oh. Hey, Granddad, I don't like this eviction thing. Too much work. Yeah. yeah, well, Adam and Eve in our Bible story were evicted too, Waffle. Sent away from God's perfect garden. Yeah, well, at least they didn't have any boxes. And after they left the garden, it was all work and struggle and pain and tears. Oh, and... how depressing. It's very sad when people turn away from God. It all started with Adam and Eve sinning, then passed on to their children, Cain and Abel, and their children. Ooh, ooh, and, and their children? Yes. 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 And their children? a man born in the first days evil his brother worked hard on the land evil in his mind and jealousy anger came to his brother a knife in his hand people of the world turn against god they built up a city to show up the pride people of the world turn against god they built up a city to show up the pride I think we get the point, Waffle. So the world really is in a mess. Yes, Waffle, it is. Oh. And we have a lot of work to do. Oh, Commander Crackknuckle. One and the same. And once more, Waffle, I see that your meagre skills have got you into another fine mess. And you need my expert commander abilities to help get you out. Uh, it's OK, Commander. Oh. Careful, laddie. Sure, I can work this out. <laughs> ah, Waffle, need I remind you just how bad you can sometimes be? Don't you remember what happened on your last post? Do you have to? I'm afraid so. Then the captain and first officer have been arguing, and no one's been in control of the ship, and the lights are flashing, and smoke's coming out of everything. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I see. Well, Waffle, it appears that the problems that are occurring on the planet are of the same type that are affecting your ship. Yeah. Uh, from my controls, I can see that if you don't do something very soon, your ship will be in very real danger. Oh, somebody, please. Help. Oh, you're right, Commander. I'm no good. <laughs>
No, oh, come on, Waffle. We've got to get this place ship shape as soon as possible. I mean, where on earth is this supposed to go? And get rid of all these boxes and throw away all these books and uh, whatever you do, make sure you do something with this pelican. What's a pelican doing here anyway? Waffle, I want you to go into the ship and fire it around in every corner. What's a? Ah, Waffle. I've never had so. Oh, hello. Um. Waffle, you just keep tidying up. If you don't mind, I've got some very important uh, biscuits to take care of. Business to take care of. Um, you just keep working and don't forget you've got to be out of here by five o'clock. See ya. Oh, phew. He's gone. Waffle, are you slacking off again? Get back to work. Mm. Oh, great. I'm here on my own and I've got to get everything done by five o'clock. And no one to help me. Oh. What's this? Looks like some old film. You have looked into my heart, Lord, and you know all about me. You know when I'm resting or when I'm working. And from heaven you discover my thoughts. You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. Before I even speak a word, you know what I will say. And with your powerful arm, you protect me from every side. I can't understand all of this. Such wonderful knowledge is far above me. Where could I go to escape from your sight or from your spirit? If I were to climb up to the highest heavens, you would be there. If I were to dig down to the world of the dead, you would also be there. Suppose I had wings like the dawning day and flew across the ocean. Even then your powerful arm would guide and protect me. Or suppose I said, I'll hide in the dark until night comes to cover me over. But you see in the dark, because daylight and dark are all the same to you. You are the one who put me together inside my mother's body. And I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvellous. Of this I have no doubt. Nothing about me is hidden from you. I was secretly woven together deep in the earth below, but with your own eyes you saw my body being formed. Even before I was born, you had written in your book everything I would do. Your thoughts are far beyond my understanding, much more than I could ever imagine. Oh, oh, that is cool. God knows all about us. I wonder if he knows that I've run out of tomb terms. <gasps> oh, look at the time. Oh, no, it's um, one, two, two, two o'clock. That means I've got um, one, two, three, four. No, no not four. Uh, one. Oh, now it means I've got not very long to get this whole place empty. Oh, dear, I've got to go. What was that? Wow! What a cool Bible! Man by the road was completely blind How Jesus made him see Really blow your mind He made a spit mud pie And squished it in his eyes Ooh, can you believe it? He's excellent Yeah! He is extreme He's out there too Yeah! He is extreme It's in your face Yeah! He is extreme Believe it, believe it Completely dead. And Jesus brought him back. Really fry your head. Then they heard him shout. Oh, Lazarus, come out. Ooh, can, can you believe it? it? He's excellent. Yeah, he is extreme. He's out there too. Yeah, he is extreme. It's in your face. Yeah, he is extreme. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Ooh, do you believe it? Hey, here's one more. Crowd were completely drained. How Jesus gave them food really pop your brain. You took some fish and bread, and everyone was fed. Ooh, can you believe it? He's excellent. Yeah, he is extreme. He's out there, do oh, yeah, he is extreme. It's in your face. Yeah, he is extreme. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Extreme. It's in your face! Oh yeah! He is 
extreme. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Okay, so I've got puppets in that box, and that film and books in this oh, box. And love! Sorry! I came as quick as I could. But you were on a plane and... Yeah, don't you... worry, I'll tell you later, but Waffa, I've got some friends to help us. Oh, you've got the seven dwarves. Well, well three anyway. Yeah, Waff? You've got the nerdy and arty Waff, Waff, and this toy. is Pete, Priscilla and Troy, they're going to help us move all of this stuff. Guys, we need all these boxes <laughs> into the truck. Go for it. Ooh, truck all right, now, well. Waff, tell me what happened. Well, what I've been doing is I've been trying to put puppets in that box there, and in this box here... No, 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 no. Waff, I mean from the very beginning. What, what went oh, on? Oh, right. Okay. Well, this morning I was in the lounge room watching a bit of TV, yeah. and... Uh, hang on, sorry, I've got an idea. <clears throat> what? Let me just try this and... <laughs> oh. Your eviction notice. I want you out of here by five. Oh, eviction notice? Oh, I'm being evicted. Yeah, and that's what happened. Oh, yeah, and Grandad showed me how beautiful the world was, and then the commander, well, he told me how much I keep on mucking things up. Okay, well, all right, that's good. we got this work to do. I, I understand that now. That's okay. good. Yeah, okay. Um, hey, sorry. Grandad told me how God made this world perfectly, and then people mucked it up. Yeah, that's called sin. Oh, yeah. And, and, um, what's God going to do about that sin? I mean, when I do things that mum and dad don't like, I get busted big time. Is God going to bust people for messing up his world? That's a very big question for you, Woff. Yeah, well, it's, it's written down here on the script, too. Oh, Waffle. When God made the world, he did make it perfectly, but we all did mess it up. We've all sinned. That's what the Bible says. Well, that's not fun. Not fun at all. And, but in fact, God loves us a lot, and he wanted to do something very special to fix up that sin problem that Adam and Eve brought into the world. Oh, well, what did he do? What did he do? Yeah. Well, um, um, maybe this will help. What? Huh? How's a dog going to help? Look, Wolf, I want you to imagine something for me. Okay. Not that, Wolf. Sorry. I, mean, I want you to imagine a little boy and a dog. Once upon a time, there was a little boy walking down the road. There, in the window of a pet shop, was the cutest little dog he'd ever seen. He fell in love with that puppy dog. He'd do anything for that puppy. So he walked into the pet shop. He, he opened the door and went into the pet shop and asked, How much is that dog in the window? The one with the waggly tail. Uh, okay, okay, okay. It was so much money. So the boy went home sad. He loved that little puppy dog. He'd do anything for a friend. Suddenly, he was hit by a thought. Ow! Why not do some jobs around the house? Then he would have enough money to buy the little puppy dog. So he did. He did the washing up. He mowed the lawn. He vacuumed the house. He swept the path. He cleaned the car. He painted the fence. He dug a swimming pool. He built a shopping centre. He unloaded an oil tanker. He built a second section of an international space station. He... Oh, I am sorry. Anyway, he had enough money to buy the little puppy dog. The little boy loved that little dog. He'd do anything for his friend. He taught it how to sit. He taught it how to sit. He, he taught it how to sit. He taught it how to play dead. And the favourite game of all was fetching the ball. They had fun together. One day, when the dog was a little bigger, they went down to a park near the boy's home. They started... They started to... They started to play ball. The boy threw the ball and the dog brought it back. He picked it up and threw it hard! But threw the dog by mistake. 
This time the boy picked up the ball and wound up his arm and wound it up and... No, not that. Yes, that. He wound it up and wound it up and wound it up and threw the ball. It went up. And up and up and... Up and up and up and... Up and up. Finally it landed and the dog ran to the ball. He looked at the ball, he looked back at the boy, and then he ran off. Well, the boy waited, but the dog was nowhere to be seen. He ran to the ball and called out for the puppy. Puppy! He called out a second time. Puppy! He called out a third time. Puppy! But the little dog was lost. He would do anything to have his friend back. And the boy walked home sad. He put signs on telegraph poles. He put notices in the local paper. But no one had seen his little dog. Sometime later, the boy was walking home from school when he heard a noise. Could it be the little dog? He peered through a fence. And there, on the other side of the fence, was the little dog. But there were big dogs biting it and a horrible man beating it. He would do anything for his friend. So the boy jumped over the fence. He ran to the dog to protect it, but there were big dogs biting him and scratching him. And everything went black. A few days later, the boy found himself in hospital. He had scratch marks and bruises and almost couldn't remember what had happened. But then his dad walked through the door and handed him the dog. He didn't listen to the story of the horrible man who'd been arrested and the big dogs that had been put in the pound because he had his friend back and he'd do anything for a friend. Okay, so God loves dogs. That's nice. Well, no, Waffle. I, I mean, yes. I, I, I mean, God loved us so much that he was willing to get bashed up for us. In fact, Jesus even died for us, Waff. Oh, wow. So, what does God think of dogs? Well, it's not about dogs, Waff. It was just a story I made up. Oh, it was a good story. Hey, hey look. I remember these guys. <laughs> the Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah, cool. They don't make us eggs like they used to. It's all mass production, fake foil wrapping, cheap imported colouring. Did you know the thickness of chocolate has dropped 36% in the last three years? You don't say. It's criminal. Whatever happened to quality? Yeah, they don't appreciate us Christmas eggs. What did you say? Us Christmas eggs. They don't appreciate... But, 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 but we're Easter eggs. Well, they put us in the shops at Christmas? No, they wait until just after Christmas, then they stick us on the shelves. Oh, that's kind of early. Easter eggs in January, when no, Easter It's is... a commercial reality. I mean, we're a commodity But, but, but what I want to know is why Easter? What do you mean, why Easter? You're going all weird on me. No, why eggs at Easter? Well, because we always have eggs at Easter. You'd be out of a job otherwise. Well, it doesn't make sense. Eh? Jesus died at Easter. Yeah, so? Jesus hung on a cross at Easter. Oh, I suppose. Jesus came alive again at Easter. You're very smart. Lots of stuff about Easter in the Bible. It's all about Easter. So what are you getting at? There are no eggs in the Easter story. What? There are no eggs in the Easter story. So why do we have eggs at Easter? That's exactly what I want to know. Oh, that was a fun video. I remember eating 20 boxes of Easter eggs. I remember you were sick for days, Waffle. Oh, I don't remember that. But I do remember all those different types of Easter eggs. Oh, that was so much fun. <laughs> but I still don't understand why we have eggs at Easter. Well, there's lots of different types of eggs. Mm -hmm. See, there's a nice pink Easter egg. I think mm -hmm. I like that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like this one. This one's got a toy inside. And this is one that I'm going to have for breakfast. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, there's one I could uh, have. Uh, I could have that one for lunch. And, uh, oh, that one, I'd love to have that one for dinner. Oh, I could have that and one there for a what? bit. Yep. Here's an egg that you could fry or you could poach or you could scramble. Yeah. These are real eggs. Oh, I fried an Easter egg once. It took me hours to scrape the chocolate off the fry pan. <laughs> well, this is a real egg, and real eggs are a good reminder of what Easter is all about. 
You see, there's something living inside this egg. Oh, uh, an elephant, a dinosaur, an alien. Oh, so we have eggs at Easter to celebrate chickens. Uh, not quite. New life, Waffle. We celebrate new life because inside an egg is a new life, a baby chicken or a duckling. Oh. And at Easter, we remember Jesus dying on the cross to offer every single person a new life with God. Oh, a new life. <gasps> Oh, I get it. So if you're a truck driver, you can get a new life as a ballet dancer. Uh, not quite. Maybe I better explain. Oh, oh, you could give me some more research to do. Waffle, this is important. Let oh. me explain from the beginning. All right, I'll get some popcorn then. Waffle. Sorry. Now see this egg. Mm -hmm. Pretend it's the earth. It's a little bit squashed. Well, just imagine, Waff. Now at the very beginning when God made the world, everything was happy and good. And God made people to be his friends. People could walk and talk with God, and everything was great. There was no death, no sadness, no pain. Everything was happy. Oh, it's not like that now. Well, no, things have changed. The Bible explains that people began to ignore God and rebel against him. They lived in a way that didn't care what God thought or said. And the perfect friendship between people and God was broken. The world has never been the same since. And the Bible calls this sin. Well, that's really bad. And our sin keeps us apart from God. Oh, well. Well, Waffle, many people think they don't need God. But how sad that we've lost that close friendship with God. God does not want anyone to be separated from him. No, it's awful. Well, more than awful. Because we can't do anything about it. Just like we can't put an egg back together. Oh. Well, that's it. We're doomed. Well, no, we're not. See, there's good news. God did something. He sent his son Jesus to take the blame of our sin on himself. And anyone who has faith in Jesus can now be a friend of God forever. Waffle, I was told about this when I was 12 years old. And for the first time, I realized that I had to ask Jesus to forgive me. And ever since then, I've been a friend of God. Oh, well, that, that sounds great, sorry. Waffle, that helps us remember what God did to fix up the sin problem. Ooh, okay. and it's because of Jesus that people can become friends of God again. That's good news after all the bad news of sin. And uh, well, if I better go and check how much room we've got left in the truck. And uh, we have one hour left. One hour? We've got one hour left? Oh, there's heaps more stuff to go. Oh dear. Hey, who's coming down the ladder? Spread the news! Spread the news! Spread the news! Hey, hey, look, it's spread Monty. the news! Hi, Monty. Spread the news! Hi, Monty. No, 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 I'm Tim. Monty's oh. my brother. Oh, spread the news! I always get the two of you mixed news. up. Ah, spread the news! Spread um, the news! Spread the news! Um, uh, what are you doing? I'm spreading the good news! <laughs> um, Ooh, that's cheese. Ah, uh, yes. I'm spreading the good news. <laughs> And the news is... The news is the same as it was back in the time of Paul. Paul, news. right. The news. Um, the news. Who's Paul? Ah, uh, spread the news. Paul? Spread the news. Is that spread Paul Moore? Spread the news. What's Paul? Spread Paul? The news. Oh, well, Tim, Paul what did happen Bible, exactly? Paul. Well, Monty, I'm glad you asked. Let's draw a map to explain to people exactly what did happen to Paul. Let's use this pizza. Oh, a very good idea indeed. Now, suppose this bit of ham is Damascus, mm. where Paul became a Christian and then told other people about Jesus and then had to sneak away in a basket. A very strong basket. A basket case basket. Oh, yes. After leaving Damascus, Paul went to a place called Jerusalem, which is where he met up with lots of other believers. At first, the believers were very scared of Paul. Oh, indeed they were. They thought it might be a trap because they all knew or thought that Paul hated believers and wanted them locked up or even killed. But they soon realised that God had really changed Paul. Damascus and Jerusalem are next to the Mediterranean Sea. Ooh. And just up from there was a city called Antioch. There were lots of believers in Antioch, and after a while, Paul went over there to help them spread the news about Jesus. Spread the news! Spread the news! Spread the news! The people at Antioch sent Paul and a guy named Barnabas off on a journey. They were being missionaries going around and telling people about Jesus. They went to an island called Cyprus. Spread the news! Spread the news! And then up to a city called... Perga. Spread the news. And then to another city, which is also called Antioch. Spread the news. And then to Iconium. Spread the news. And Lystra. The news. And... Derby. News. <laughs> and then... They went back again! Spread, spread the, the news! Spread the news! Spread the news! Woo! 
Spread the news! 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 Wow! Well, the whole trip took over a year. Paul really spent a lot of time spreading the cheese. Oh, I mean, um, spreading the oh, spreading the news of Jesus. And according to the Bible, a great number of people believed. Next time they should create chocolate cake. Now that would be great news. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, how are we going to move this thing? Oh, last time we used this was when we were filming Uncle Fo. You up there, Uncle Fo? Hello? Tell us another of Jesus' stories, Uncle Fo. Yeah, let's see. All right. Uh, there were two men. The first was a wise man who built his house on a big rock. And the rain came down, and the floods came up. Oh, floods, floods! Yeah, and the wind blew hard against the house, but it didn't fall because it was built on a big rock. Yeah. Now the second man was a foolish man who built his house on sand, and the rain came down, and the floods, floods, floods! Flood. Yes, and the wind blew hard against the house, and it fell down. Oh, bang, crash! Oh, no. Why did Jesus tell this story? Well, Jesus said that the wise person is like the one who hears his words and puts them into action, and the foolish person is someone who doesn't. So I should try to live as Jesus says? That would be wise, Nikki. I'm sorry. Do we have to keep all this old stuff? Well, yes, Waff. We, we've got lots of videos to keep making. Well, will I be in them? I expect you'll be the star, Waff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah like <laughs> See, there's lots of children that still don't know about Jesus and don't know that God wants to be their friend. Oh, it's good to be God's friend. It is. Woff, well, imagine yeah. that you had a friend who was in charge of Disneyland, <gasps> McDonald's, <gasps> and Arnott's. Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, who is it? Can I meet them? Can I meet them now? But imagine if you were a friend of somebody who was in charge of the whole universe. <gasps> wow! Oh, can I meet... Hang on. That's a trick question. You're talking about God. Exactly, Woff. Getting to know God is getting to know the one who's in charge of the whole universe. Awesome! Yeah, Woff. It's both very easy and very hard to be a friend of God. What? Well, well, being a friend of God means following God no matter what. It means asking God to forgive you. And he will do because of Jesus. And then it means choosing to live God's way and not like everybody else lives. It's like God is most important and everything else is not so important. In fact, Jesus told a story about this from the Bible. Imagine there was a man and when he was out shopping one day, he spotted a pearl. A really beautiful pearl like no other one that he'd ever seen. This was a pearl of a pearl, a real mother of pearls. It was very valuable and he had to have it. He went into the shop to find out how much it cost. But when he looked at the price tag, he was astounded. It was such a good pearl, it cost a fortune. But he had to have it, it was so good. So do you know what he did? He sold his car. He sold his house. He sold everything he had. He even sold his clothes and went back to the store wearing a garbage bag. But now he had enough money to buy the pearl and he was very happy. Ah, well, we've almost cleared it out, Woff. Yeah. Um, why would anyone want to be God's friend? Well, anyone who's God's friend will be with God forever and ever and ever. Oh. And God's the only one that knows how life works. Now, yeah. where's that vacuum cleaner? Ah. Oh, it's behind you. Ah, um, but, but it's busted. What do you mean? It was working a minute ago. Well, I brought it in here to clean this room, and it just doesn't work. <sighs> here, you turned it on and off and on and off, and it just well, doesn't want to work. Did you try plugging it into the PowerPoint? Oh. It won't work unless it's connected. <laughs> This is a tree. And these are the branches. They get their energy and nutrition from the tree. Now they're alive, but snip one off. It may look okay, but it will never grow. It's lifeless. This is a vegetable patch. 
These are snow peas. Oh, they need to be part of the plant. If you pluck a snow pea, ugh, ah, ew, ew, it smells really good and looks really good, but um, now it's dead. The vegetable will only grow and ripen when it's on the plant. Once you pull it off, whoop, it will eventually start to wither and rot and get very smelly and really mushy too. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. <sighs> well, Woff, we're packed up, the truck's full, we're ready to go. I'll be sad to move. We've had a lot of good memories here, haven't we, Sorry. We have, Woff, but I'm sure God has something in store for us. We'll keep going. I don't want to go. It's so sad. Well, that's what you have to do when you get evicted, Waffle. Which reminds me, I should ring the eviction company. Have yeah. you got that letter with a phone number? I'll put it in the bin. No. Oh, here it is. Oh. <laughs> now, that's their number. Hang on a second, Waffle. Have you read this letter? Woff, what's the number of our building? Oh, uh, five Bannerman Drive. Waffle, this is an eviction notice for number six Bannerman Drive. That's our next door neighbours. All oh, right. Oh, should I give it to them? Waffle, we've moved everything out of the factory for nothing. We haven't been evicted at all. Well, it's nice and tidy now. Waffle! Oops.